Hello everyone, Watches Review here with a look at Hal Jordan from the Green Lantern Movie Masters line. This is the version with the mask and the Collect and Connect piece as opposed to the later released one which was unmasked and had some accessories but no Collect and Connect piece. Um, for one second I just wanted to point out a sort of cool aspect of the packaging. Not that the packaging itself isn't cool but um, this one's a little bit different in that it looks like um, his hands just sort of jumping out of the package. That's because for whatever reason they packaged him so the hand is pretty much touching in the front. So I mean, yeah, that's a really neat feature. Only kind of downsides the fact that, uh, yeah, probably would get damaged pretty easily. But hey, whatever. Now, this is one of the biggest figures I was kind of lukewarm on this line about, but you know what? Figured I was going to get some of the other stuff. Had to get the Hal Jordan, if nothing else. So hold on a second, I'll get this out pack. This version of Hal Jordan comes with a parallax connect and connect piece, which I believe is probably identical to the one that came with Rotlop Fan. If not, maybe it's just a little bit different color. A Green Lantern. Very neat uh, design that they use for the movie. Looks a lot more nautical than the traditional ones. And then a figure stand, which is basically identical to the ones that you would see in the DC Universe Classics line, just that there's no detail on it, which in itself is a little bit disappointing. Probably wouldn't have hurt them to have just tossed a green lantern in the front there. I mean, they already wrote China on the back. Now, um, in some of my previous reviews, I criticized this line as looking cheap, and uh, this figure pretty much epitomizes why I feel that the line is somewhat lackluster. And a lot of that just simply has to do with the use of this reflective plastic, which is something I've come to associate more with things being cheap, as opposed to like when you get a lot of paint on something and, you know, you don't get that amount of luster. As you can see, the light's really reflecting off this. So, I mean, yeah, it's completely lame. Uh, the other big complaint is the fact that we have this little mask here, which is just painted on. Looks incredibly, incredibly cheap. No sculpting at all. I mean, Mattel does um, sculpting for their masks and some of their other lines, so the fact that they didn't is... You know, just really, really lame. I believe they probably use the same head sculpt for the maskless one, except for they don't bother painting the mask on. That's probably why they did this, but all the same, it's just these really stupid cutting corners kind of measures. Now, the character has his one hand open this really kind of funky pose for holding the lantern. I honestly don't like that that much. I wish they would have gone with, you know, something just a little bit more conventional. Because it just looks like a really, really crazy hand pose. It's also not that convincing for holding a lantern. I mean, this thing's going to have some heft. It's going to weigh something. Who just holds it with, like, their tips of their fingers? I don't know. Interestingly enough, though, it's got this sort of wacky design on the bottom. I don't remember if in the film if it had like this cutaway, so I'm not sure what the point of all this is. But as for Hal Jordan, he is a little bit nicer than I thought he'd be in pack and, you know, even from what I've seen in some of the other videos. Uh, the articulation does feel a little bit better than I thought it would which comes out sounding really, really weird, but you people know what I mean in terms of just how the joints work and everything. It's actually got a pretty smooth motion. Uh, the only real issue is that it doesn't seem to really hold the weight very well, so it really does need the included stand, which I'm not so happy about because when I'm posing stuff, I'd rather not have to pose it with a stand. And also, one of the big drawbacks of this line, one of the reasons I don't really care for the uh, Green Lantern Movie Masters, is again just the lack of energy constructs, which is something that they also did in the Green Lantern Classics wave. I'm not sure why they couldn't just toss in like little extra bits and pieces here and there if they're already doing it for the uh, smaller lines. And, you know, those 
ones kind of fit larger figures anyway. So, I mean, they already have the sculpts available. They wouldn't need to do anything extra. They just need to toss in a little extra piece of plastic, which might cost them like a nickel, but it makes a lot of people happy. You know, it's just me, though. And probably a lot of other people come to think of it. I mean, um, Wave 11, kind of the best example of what they could sort of do, where they had a ton of lanterns. All of them kind of came with their own sort of unique energy projections, which was really nice. And given the fact these figures are priced comparably to the DC Universe Classics line, yet are a smaller size, you kind of expect that they would, I guess, kind of work the offset in different ways, like they really should be including these extra parts. So, I mean, as nice as the Collect and Connect pieces, and it might be, I mean, it might use a little bit more plastic than your typical Collect and Connect piece, I mean, it still just kind of doesn't make up for the difference, and I sort of feel they kind of half ass the line, just expecting that it might not sell that well, and, you know, they were just kind of trying to cut costs, but I'm getting totally off tangent. As for the figure itself, I mean, if you can get past the fact that they really painted on this cheap-ass mask, and, you know, just various sort of fluky things, it's not that bad looking, and, you know, it can get into a pretty wide variety of poses, just because we have ball and sockets for most of the major joints. Not the hands, though. The hands only rotate, but quick run through articulation while I'm just on it. Hands rotate ball and sockets here at the elbows, slightly impeded by the um, parts here, just the sculpt. It's kind of a weird way that they did the sculpting too. Rotation at bicep, ball jointed shoulder. It doesn't go up a tremendous amount, which is somewhat disappointing, but you know, it's kind of a natural range of motion. Head is on a ball joint, but doesn't have much up down. Again, kind of disappointing for a flying character. Only waist articulation, which is probably one of the biggest things that bothers me about this figure. I mean, just standard waist articulation just sort of seems like a thing of the past. I mean, I've been spoiled by a lot of the uh, newer, cooler toy lines. Leg is the standard DC joint with the outward motion, forward back. Bone socket here at the knee. Really good range of motion. And ball and socket at the ankle, in addition to, well, you kind of get a pivot on this foot, it feels like. But, I mean, it might just be the plastic warping. But, I mean, so yeah, you definitely have some amount of articulation. It's just that the waist joint here, a little bit disappointing. I can understand why they did it, just in terms of, I don't know, maybe laziness or whatever. As opposed to figuring out a way to work in an ab crunch that looks kind of realistic and stuff. And again, uh, the other thing that really bugs me is the fact that the head doesn't really go up all that much, which is always a pretty big consideration when your character can fly. Up, up, and away. Yeah, it's gonna fall over. Now, um, the other thing is you don't really have much paint definition. I mean, even when we're looking at the hair, it's basically just one solid color. All the detail comes from the sculpting itself, which you know is a pretty decent hair sculpt. No complaints there. I mean, I like what they did with the biceps just because it's a bit more unconventional. I mean, a lot of the other lines and stuff will give you like these really ballsy biceps, but you know, Ryan Reynolds and the Hal Jordan from the film aren't like really buff guys, so it does sort of make sense. Or at least not buff to the point of being comic buff, which is sort of unrealistic muscle. I mean, all around, you know, it's basically a new sculpt, which undoubtedly was also recycled for the Sinestro, probably. Um, all in all, eh, probably not one of the most impressive figures from the line. I mean, if there's one thing or two things to kind of pick up, it's probably you should be going for the aliens that might not so much get um, another recurrence, like Rotlup fan, probably this will be the only time we'll ever see the character. And then you have a lot of other sort of non-human characters where 
partly the unconventional designs and stuff and the fact that you know you don't really know how tall they kind of should be works out and displays when you're just looking at them side by side unless you in fact do know how tall they're supposed to be at which point maybe not so much but uh, definitely a sort of okayish, decentish figure. Really com can't complain too much about this one. Can't say a ton of great things about him, but you know, kind of like it. Just not uh, terribly excited for it or anything. More excited for the collecting connect that comes with, despite seeing images and thinking, eh. But yeah, this has been a look at the masked Hal Jordan from the. Green Lantern movie masters line put out by Mattel in whatever year we're currently in, probably 2011. And yeah, I mean, probably gonna be able to find these things a bit cheaper because I think a lot of stores will be gradually working them into clearance. So I don't think the movie possibly did tremendously well. I might be reading into things too much. Till next time, folks.